Using just watercolor in an artwork can be limiting, especially when you want to paint something that doesn't lend itself to being painted with watercolors, like for example a Claude Monet or Gustav Klimt inspired piece. The old masters used oil paints when they created these paintings, so naturally it'd be hard to recreate them with watercolors. Unless you use some smart mixed media techniques, that is. Which will be exactly what I will be showing you in this video, while guiding you through the process of painting my version of Jean d'Arc. There are a few things you need to pay attention to when using mixed media to avoid messing your painting up. So I'm going to share these with you too. The first and foremost thing is to pick the right paper that allows mixed media techniques, otherwise the paper can be damaged. I recently came across the Claire Fontaine Hot Press watercolor paper, which is not only super smooth and sturdy, it also allows for all sorts of mixed media techniques and it creates beautiful watercolor layering effects. I've linked all this and the other materials I used for this painting in the video description for you. And for this painting I used so many different mediums. Oil pastels, wax crayons, masking fluid, gouache, metallic watercolors and color pencils. And the clear watercolor paper survived it all. But before I start any of my mixed media techniques, I need a solid foundation for my painting, which I always do with watercolors. I begin by painting the skin. As you can see, I mix green, beige, orange and brown tones. I always paint the entire skin area to ensure the skin looks even everywhere. Colors I use to mix the skin tones are yellow ochre, brown or red ochre, for example from Winsor & Newton or Mozart Komorebi, and I also used olive green, cadmium orange and cadmium red. While I wet the entire skin area, I pick up different colors on my brush, like green, and dip it into the wet paint. The new color now bleeds into the spot where I touch the paper. It looks chaotic in the beginning, but trust the process, it will dry evenly. While that dries, let's paint Jean's beautiful armor next. Unlike other things that are hard to paint with watercolors, metal is the perfect subject because its characteristics are harsh highlights and sharp edged shadows. If anything, watercolor is the perfect medium to accomplish that, because it creates harsh edges by itself. And it's actually quite easy to paint basic metal effects with it. It will look even more beautiful if you use metallic watercolors. I start by mixing a bit of my silver metallic tone, paints grey, black and a bit of water and generously paint in all parts of the armor. I leave highlights white and mix in additional colors like blue, silver, greens and even golds. The armor has to dry now, so I move on to adding masking fluid. I used Winsor and Newton's masking fluid and let me tell you, this stuff is nasty. It will ruin the brush you are using to apply it, so take one that you are willing to sacrifice. I didn't know that and killed a good one. The masking fluid is like rubber and once it dries it will stick to the bristles and you won't get it out of your brush. It basically turns your brush into a gummy ball. I haven't found a solution for that yet, so if you have any ideas feel free to share it in the comment section. But once you have sacrificed the brush for the masking fluid, you can use it every time and it does work quite well actually. I wouldn't use it on details where accuracy is important, as I found the masking fluid is quite hard to control. But on larger areas or where the detail isn't that important, it's a great tool. For this painting I used it on the Gustav Klimt patterns in the background. Once the masking fluid is dry, you can even rest your hand on it. It does feel weird though as it stays sticky even when it's dried. And I had to get used to that, because it feels a bit strange when I touch it. But other than that, I really loved working with it. Next I continue with the face. This model has the perfect lighting by the way, because I took the photos myself in the sunlight, which created these beautiful direct shadows under her eyebrows and nose. Because of that, painting the face was surprisingly easy. If you don't have complicated lighting in a portrait, it will make the painting process so much easier. I started by mixing cadmium orange and burnt sienna to paint the shadows on the eyes and then I drew the shading down towards the nose. For the shadings on her jaw, I mixed light ochre and olive green. Next I paint the lips. With a clean brush I mix light cadmium red and carefully paint the lips shape. It's easy to accidentally paint over the lines. It's quite similar to applying lipstick as the shape has to look just right. Now, while the face has to dry, I paint the background in an intense gold tone with a big mop brush. The golden paint I use here is from the Pearlescent palette from Etcher. I actually work with two different metallic watercolor brands, 
One is Hemi and the other one Etcher. The Hemi paints are very pigmented and shiny, which is beautiful, but they create a thick coat of metallic pigments. And when you paint on top of that coat with regular watercolors, the color bleeds into the metallic pigments and it looks somewhat frayed. The Etcher colors don't have such strong pigmentation and I can work on top of it with regular watercolors without them fraying out. You can also mix the two metallic paints and just balance out the pigmentation. Here you can see how well the masking fluid holds up against the water. I find it kind of satisfying to paint over it. The strange shapes I mask out here are actually pieces of a painting by Gustav Klimt that I incorporated into my artwork. I love doing old masters inspired paintings for which I merged their style with my own. It's so much fun and the end result always looks beautiful. To make art like that, I first create a digital mockup, which I then transfer to my watercolor paper. And if you want to learn how you can make these compositions too and how to turn your digital mockup into a watercolor and mixed media painting, join me on Patreon and watch the extended version of this video and the accompanying Photoshop and Procreate tutorials. The full version of this video is 4 hours long and walks you through the entire process of this painting step by step, while the accompanying two other tutorials teach you how you can create digital compositions yourself in Photoshop or Procreate. Just follow the link in the video description to watch the full tutorial and get access to 200 other painting videos and tutorials at once. And now comes both a fun and a terrifying part removing the masking fluid from the paper. You have to be careful to not damage the paper though. I found the best way to remove it is to do it with my fingers, as I can be extra careful not to damage the surface of the paper. If you remove a big chunk of it at once, it can rip pieces off of the paper, so I try to remove it by slowly rolling my fingers over the surface until it comes off fully. I would also recommend to test your masking fluid on your paper before you try it on your painting. Some papers are just too delicate for it, so make sure you don't ruin your artwork without testing it before. As you can see, the application of the masking fluid doesn't look very accurate. For these patterns, however, it's not a big deal, but for other details, you might need a finer brush to apply it. For me, since I don't want to sacrifice one of my detail brushes, I will probably just use masking fluid for larger areas. When painting with watercolors, I always jump back and forth because of its drying time. So here we go back to the face. With a detail brush, I paint the eyebrows and lashes. And I also add more shadings to the lower lip. Next, I go back to the armor and paint more layers. I add an intense brown tone to build depth on her chest. Can you see how convincing it already looks? The contrasting highlight and the dark gray create such a stark effect. I blend the edges of the lips with my workspace dominance pencils. And I add a bit of blush to the face with a pink shade. I finish the face by adding a few details here and there, like drawing some lighter areas around her eyes with the white luminance pencil. Now coming to the next mixed media technique. To make the Gustav Klimt background elements look like actual oil paint, I use neon color wax pencils from Carandage. But you can use any other wax-based pencils or even children's crayons. I found that you can easily paint over wax pencils with watercolors, even though they contain wax. But it's hard to draw over them with regular color pencils or the Carandage luminance color pencils. The more oil or wax a pencil contains, obviously the more difficult it gets to add water-based mediums on top of them. But it does work to a certain extent. For example, I can paint with watercolors over wax-based pencils, but not over oil pastels. The water will just be repelled, like on a rain jacket. Now back to the painting. I draw the pattern rough and a bit messy. I don't want it to look too neat, because in Klim's painting, they looked almost as if a child had painted them. And with the side of the crayon, I give the surface a tarnished look. To finish the armor, I add some details on the shadings, like the intricate ornaments on the sides of the segments on the corset. These additional layers will create more depth and make the armor even more convincing. With a red wax crayon, I add some details on the robe and with white gouache, I paint some highlights on spots I accidentally overpainted. And now the armor is finally finished. Now I only need to paint the bottom part, the Monet-inspired water lily pond. I start by giving it an intense cobalt blue base. For this, I use my oil pastels from Zenelier. They feel and look like real oil paint and create the most beautiful effects. And you don't have to gesso or prime your paper before using them. You can simply draw with them on top of your watercolor painting. 
but like real oil paint, they take at least a day to dry. So I use them when I'm almost finished with my painting, so that I don't accidentally smudge the parts I painted when I rest my hand on them. Like I said before, once you add a layer of oil pastels, you can't paint over that with watercolors or acrylics, as the oil naturally repels water. Claude Monet painted his water lilies very loosely, so I do the same. But because I don't have so many tones from the Senelie oil pastels, as they are quite expensive, I switched them up with my neon color wax pencils. I didn't have any troubles using the oil pastels and the wax pencils together and they look quite similar too. The oil pastels have a more smooth and oily look to them, which I absolutely love. And here we have the final painting. Getting the tape off was quite the challenge though. I often order my tape on Amazon and am surprised every time it arrives because often the tape I ordered before is sold out and then I have to order a new one, so I never know what I get. This tape turned out a bit too strong for the paper, so I had to be careful when removing it. But when I do damage my paper, I use a wooden folding stick and go over the damaged parts. This flattens them and covers any damage. It's my go-to trick for these kinds of accidents. And that about wraps up this video tutorial. I hope you liked this walkthrough of my Jean d'Arc painting and found my mixed media techniques helpful. And I hope I see you in the next one. Have a great painting day. Bye bye.